Welcome back guys. I'm going to do another video on the 818 to try and get one out maybe once a week. That'd be awesome. I got a lot of travel coming up in the first quarter of 2020 though, so I don't know that I'll get there. One of my New Year's resolutions was better video content for the YouTube channel, so uh, I now have an actual camera on a tripod that I can make videos with. And uh, I'm not too sure exactly how it's going to go. I've never used one of those before. I've always just had the camera in my hand and, and kind of made some videos. Uh, I don't know if I'll do time lapses or, or what I'll be doing, but I'll try and get a little better video. Uh, today I'm going to try and uh, show off a little bit of the shifting mechanism. I finally have it completely shifting with the new uh, stainless steel tubing shifter. So uh, we'll actually I'll try and do kind of like a split screen with my phone and the and the tripod so that we can see the. Um, the, the shifter in the car and the mechanism in the back all moving at the same time. I'll split screen them, sync them up. I don't know if I've got the skills to do that, but we'll try it. Uh, but that's what I'm going to try and do today is uh, kind of put a bow on the shifter. All that's really left to do after this is to take it all apart and powder coat it so that it looks good. It's mechanically complete. So uh, let's take a look at that. As you can see, this is um, looking a lot like it did before. Uh, except for instead of that uh, EMT conduit that I had in there, I've got the half inch stainless tubing now. I've still got the same uh, triangular uh, bell crank right there. Uh, this was a little cheap uh, Ace Hardware turnbuckle that, that didn't have heim joints on it. I've replaced it with a piece of tubing with uh, heim joints on either end. Uh, I, this piece right here was perfectly flat as you can see I put a about a 45 degree rotation in it so that it would line up better with the uh, tube coming out of there uh, and then the same thing over here this piece coming to the other side was flat and I've now put a not a 45 maybe a 22 on it uh, to give it a little better angle uh, against this bell crank which is a straight bell crank all it does is inverts the action once again, stainless tubing going uh, back in. Let's see if we can crawl up under the car and take a look at what we've got in there. All right, so now you can see the stainless tubing comes right under the, the axles, right beside the oil pan. And then I've got these swage lock compression fittings uh, that are here. Uh, th this tubing had to be split in half anyway no matter what I had done I could not have uh, even if I'd uh, gotten the angles different it would have been impossible to install it as one piece it would have just been too long and this little inch and a half jog right here helps a bunch with the geometry so got one of those on each side and then back out to the other side back up front there's the hind joints that have always been there and the stainless tubing with nice uh, symmetrical bends in them it looks real good uh, where it passes through the firewall I'm going to try and maybe fill that up with uh, like some great stuff foam or something like that uh, just to, to reduce the noise of the, the linkage uh, rattling around in the um, as it passes through the frame so i uh, try and see where i can get the camera that we could get a decent view of this whole thing uh, so you can see both sides obviously you won't be able to see that linkage and that linkage at the exact same time but if i get a view somewhere up in here you'll be able to see this bell crank and then you'll see the whole thing go in and out which will mean that that bell crank's working so let me see if i can find a place to Strap this camera up where you can actually see what's going on. Well, maybe you will be able to see everything all at one time. Alright, so here we are in the front of the car. I'm not too sure where I'll take my audio from. Probably have to split it as well, but here you can see uh, the tube in there that I just showed you a second ago. So, here we go. We're in neutral. One. Neutral. Two neutral three neutral four neutral five 
and you just heard the reverse lockout release, reverse. We'll come out of reverse. We can go back the other way. Five, four, three, two, one. I don't quite get the engagement in the click I'd like on one, so I'm gonna try and adjust it just a little bit. I got the adjustment on the hind joints on each end. Uh, as well as uh, the hind joint on the bell crank. So I'd like just a little more solid click there at one. I get a good click coming back to neutral and two. Oh, well, I got a decent click on one that time. I probably just need to get it tightened up a little bit on the alignment. You can hear five when you go in really well. You hear the bell crank lock, uh, excuse me, the bell crank, the reverse lockout. So if you come from five, you can't go into reverse. You gotta come back there and you'll hear it release and then you can go into it. And it's loud when it goes into reverse as well. So five, heard the lockout release. And now you can go into reverse. So, um, very little float on the lever when you put it in the gear you want. One actually gets you the most float. And I think that's probably gonna come in too far over for one. I think I probably need to try and limit the travel. I can come all the way, let's see. So there's neutral. And there's one right there, but I can actually come all the way over to there so i think i need to find a way to limit how far that way i can travel and probably do that maybe with a little stop up here uh, maybe something that screws in and out of there um or maybe on the back end so one and you do get good firm engagement there two three four Five. Reverse. A little tough to get in reverse. And I think that's fairly common. Uh, even when you're back there using your hand, it's, it's a little tough to get it in reverse. So, not bad. Real happy with it. Um, I'm fixing to disassemble it to get it all cleaned up, powder coated, and then uh, I'll put it all back in and try and fill up those holes back there with, with great stuff and maybe put a boot on the back side just to make sure no hot air is coming in because it's right beside the headers. I don't want blowing hot air into the engine compartment. And then uh, after that, uh, it's on to the brakes. I've got the brakes mechanically mounted. I showed that on the last video. I've got the new hoses in, so maybe this weekend I'll get around to put the new hoses on. Now I'll be able to bleed the brakes, put the exhaust on, put the fuel tank back in, finish replumbing the fuel system. I don't know. If I wasn't traveling, I'd probably have it on the ground and driving around the neighborhood next week, but it might be two or three weeks. We'll have to see.